The cold doesn't kill you all at once. It steals you inch by inch. First your fingers, then your choices, then your mind. And when you finally close your eyes, it feels peaceful, which is exactly how the cold wins. So let's skip the poetry. You're freezing. The temperature is dropping faster than your options. The power is out, the roads are dead, and the last warm breath you took is already fading off your skin. If you don't act now, you're looking at a slow, quiet death that feels like falling asleep. I'm not here to make you comfortable, I'm here to keep you alive. You start with shock. Everyone does. The moment the heat cuts off, grid failure, blizzard, vehicle breakdown, whatever, you stand there trying to understand what just happened. That pause costs lives. Cold doesn't wait. Your body is a furnace set to 98 degrees and the world outside wants to drag it down to match whatever nightmare temperature it currently sits at. The bigger the difference, the faster you lose heat. Forget fire for a second. Forget shelter. Before you can think about anything else, you need to control heat loss because the cold is ripping it out of you like a thief grabbing pockets. Wind doubles the rate. Wet clothes? That's a death sentence disguised as discomfort. Wet fabric pulls heat out five times faster than dry. If your clothes are soaked, you're not wearing insulation, you're wearing refrigeration. So step one, stop the heat leak. That means stop moving long enough to fix what you're wearing. Shake off snow, wring out anything damp, tighten clothing around your core. Your limbs are expendable, your organs are not. If something has to get cold, let it be your fingers, not your liver. You need to think like an engineer trapped inside a dying machine. Your machine is losing heat through conduction, convection, evaporation, radiation. Every one of those, it's trying to kill you right now. Your job is to shut them down one by one. Now let's talk threat, real threat, because the cold isn't the only enemy here. It's just the one you can feel gnawing at your bones. The bigger danger is the one in your head. Panic. Panic makes you wander. Wander too long and hypothermia turns you stupid. You'll start dropping gear because your brain thinks it's heavy. You'll unzip your jacket because you think you're burning up. You'll walk away from shelter because a voice in your mind says you need to cool off. Those are real symptoms. That's real danger. When everything goes wrong, the cold turns your own brain into a hostile negotiator. So you make a rule, simple, brutal, absolute. Never stop thinking about the next five minutes. Where are you losing heat? How do you stop that? What buys you time? Five minutes, over and over. Fire is instinct. Everyone wants it. Everyone thinks it's the first step. But fire is loud, bright, and slow to build. Fire says, here I am to anything with eyes or bad intentions. And fire solves exactly one problem, heat. It doesn't stop wind. It doesn't block snow. It doesn't hide you. Fire is a tool you earn after you stabilize. What you need first is shelter or anything that acts like it. And no, shelter doesn't have to be a cabin or a tent. It can be a car, a ditch, a garage, a dumpster, a busted tool shed, even a drift of snow if you know what you're doing. Shelter isn't about comfort. It's about trapping the heat leaking from your body faster than the world can steal it. If you're in a vehicle, stay inside unless the engine is running and you smell fumes. The car is a metal coffin if you handle it wrong, but it's still a barrier between you and the wind. Insulate the inside with whatever you have, floor mats, bags, clothes. You're not decorating, you're sealing openings. If you have to build shelter, don't think home. Think heat trap. Windproof first, waterproof second, insulated last. You can stuff leaves, trash, paper, even clothing scraps into cracks. The goal isn't nice. The goal is survive. And when your brain starts whispering that you're fine now, that's the first sign you're not. Let's get specific. Your core temperature drops even a couple degrees and your body begins shutting systems down. Shivering ramps up your metabolic rate to generate heat, but shivering burns calories like a bonfire eats wood. If you don't feed that fire, it goes out. Food becomes life support, not gourmet meals, calories, sugars, fats, carbs. 
anything your body can convert into metabolic heat fast. Candy bars, peanut butter, crackers, even stale bread carries more heat than nothing. And if you're thinking, I'm not hungry, congratulations, that's hypothermia talking. Water. This part people get wrong. You don't stop drinking just because it's cold. Dehydration thickens your blood, slows circulation, and cuts off heat distribution. You can drink snow, but only after warming it in your hands or against your body. Eating snow drops your core temperature even faster, which is the exact opposite of what you're trying to do. Your body is the stove. You need fuel. You need hydration. Everything else is commentary. Let's go back to the environment. The cold can freeze you from the outside, but it also creates threats you don't see until they're already too close. Ice weakens structure. Power lines fall. Trees crack like rifle shots. Roofs sag and collapse. Roads hide black ice under a thin blanket of snow. Even the quiet becomes dangerous. Predators, people or animal, move easier when your hearing is muffled by wind and your attention is split by survival. So you develop awareness. Not paranoia, calculation. You listen for crocking sounds overhead. You scan the ground before stepping. You keep your gear tight so nothing snags if you slip. Every move is intentional because every mistake has a cost. And then there's the human factor. When everything goes wrong, disaster, collapse, grid failure, some people turn desperate faster than the temperature drops. Cold limits mobility, slows reaction time, and creates pockets of shelter where strangers become competitors. Heat isn't just warmth, it's leverage. Someone will want what you have. Someone will watch your fire. Someone will follow your tracks. So you learn to hide your presence. Bury footprints. Keep noise low. No shouting unless someone's life depends on it. Wrap reflective materials inward so they don't flash. Survival isn't just staying warm, it's not being found by the wrong person while you're weak. Okay, let's talk hypothermia, the thing hunting you right now. Now in a textbook way, in a survival way, it comes in stages. First you shiver, then you shake, then the shaking stops, not because you're better, but because your muscles are too cold to keep fighting. Your thoughts slow, your speech slurs, you make stupid decisions and think you're being logical. If you get to the point where you don't feel cold anymore, you're in severe hypothermia. That warm, sleepy feeling is the brain shutting down. You are minutes from collapse. Rewarming has rules. Break them and you die faster. You warm the core first, chest, neck, groin, not the limbs. If you heat the limbs too fast, Cold blood rushes into the heart and can stop it. That's called afterdrop. It kills people who technically did the right thing, just in the wrong order. Warm the core slowly, steadily, intentionally. If you have a partner and body heat is the only source, it works, but it's slow and awkward and neither of you are gonna enjoy it. But you're not here to enjoy anything. You're here to live. Let's talk solutions. Things you can use right now. Things that work when everything else fails. Plastic bags, they're portable heat traps. Put them between layers of clothing, not against your skin. They stop wind and keep warm air contained. Newspaper, cardboard, loose fabric, insulation. Stuff it inside your clothes. The more air you trap, the warmer you'll be. Hand warmers, great, but only if they're touching arteries, not fingertips. Put them under armpits, inside groin folds, along the neck. Heat the blood highways, not the dead ends. No sleeping bag? You can make one. Blanket inside a trash bag. Jacket inside a backpack. Anything that traps warm air becomes survival gear. Moving around? Yes, but controlled movement. Not running, not sweating. Sweat is liquid death in cold conditions. Move enough to generate heat. Stop before you get damp. Light a fire only when you're hidden, wind protected and have enough fuel to keep it alive. A fire that dies too soon isn't a comfort, it's a morale killer. Even your breathing matters. Exhale into your jacket or scarf to recycle a little warmth. It won't save your life alone, but it buys minutes, and minutes are everything. Now, 
Imagine the worst case scenario. You're outside, shelterless, temperatures dropping, storm rising and night creeping in. That's the moment where people give up. They sit down just to rest. They don't get back up. You don't sit, you dig. Snow isn't just cold, it's an insulator. A snow trench, a snow cave, even a mound scraped against a wall traps heat long enough to get you through the night. You carve a small hole, just big enough for your body. You block wind with your pack or your knees. You curl into a ball, core protected, limbs tucked tight. It's not glamorous, it's not heroic, but it keeps you alive. And that's the entire game. Stay alive long enough for the next decision. Before we close this, here's the truth you need to carry with you. The cold isn't a monster. It isn't emotional. It doesn't take pleasure in your suffering. It's physics, uncaring, relentless, predictable. That means you can beat it. You don't need perfect gear. You don't need a roaring fire. You don't need wilderness training. You need awareness. You need discipline. You need to make the right decisions when your body is screaming for comfort. You don't freeze to death all at once. You freeze through a hundred tiny failures. Ignore wet socks, lose a glove, stay still too long, eat nothing, drink nothing, trust a warm feeling, let the wind hit your skin, say, I'll be fine. Those are the mistakes that dig your grave. Now you know how to avoid them. So when everything goes wrong, when the power dies, the night drops, and the world turns against you, you won't panic and you won't freeze. You'll act, you'll think, you'll survive. Because the cold only wins if you stop fighting.